Well, Phoenix, okay. the counter the Night Stalker. Dayman, fighter of the Nightman. I love watching Dark Ascension Night Stalker during Egg. Uh, because he's still flying, right? He's still flying yeah. above everyone, but his wings go down. He just kind of like walks really slowly and awkwardly uh, yeah. around the fight. Seconds remain. Yeah. <laughs> These guys don't know why I am the knight. Five seconds. <laughs> why do this to me? Uh, now, this isn't uh, Thunder Predator. Normally, Thunder Predator like to run the Phoenix in the three position. Uh, obviously, we already see the Tide Hunter, but... Um, you know, and no, nothing super fancy about this. It should just be three tied, four Phoenix, 40R on the mid Earth Spirit, as we expected. I mean, he's he owned with it yesterday. I don't, I don't see any reason why not to keep doing it. Um, I think if you keep doing it, it becomes fairly easy to predict, and there is a, a couple of issues with it. I mean, he doesn't do tons of burst damage like a lot of other mids can do, and. When he gap closes, you put yourself a little bit out of position. Yes, he's uh, an excellent tool. I don't think he fits in the meta. I think it's something that you flex and take people by surprise with. But if you get on top of Spectre, I think Spectre just turns around and beats the hell out of you. He pops the blade mail, uses Mantis style, and starts clicking away. Yeah, you're going to need a a hero that works with them and can get on top of you. But at the same time, you also can't pick something that gets countered by the Night Stalker, which he removes a lot of heroes from the pool. Like you said, the Blink Dagger has been more common of a pickup in China. And here in NASA, we typically see it picked up later, um, sometimes after, you know, Aghanim Scepter and maybe a Medallion or a Solar Crest or a BKB, and then, then the Blink Dagger. Uh, it's sometimes third item. But yeah, I, I've always been a fan of Blink Dagger Night Stalker. Uh, back when they first reworked his Ags, I, I ran it a lot myself. Yeah, um, Aghanim Scepter on him has fallen out of popularity as well. Uh, people were liking it at first, but they feel like, all right, well, we, we can just do something to help our team fight so much more than the AoE Void. Wow, well, uh, Ben. Yeah, it's banned. banned out. Yeah, it keeps on getting through the pool despite how good it is, which is uh, interesting to me. But I think at this point, Beast Coast realized, okay, uh, this is one of the things we're concerned about. We can fight into them in the late game fairly easily. What is What are the few things that we don't they necessarily don't have a lot of time here? Yeah. I think Team Brazil just taking Faceless Void. Five, it feels boring, nine, but yeah, I think you do. I think you're right. <gasps> oh, that is the opposite of boring. Okay, oh, yeah. we get a lone druid. Interesting. Yeah, now this spices things up. It is excellent at defending the egg, just like Faces Void would do, but we rarely see this picked. Team Brazil giving us the content we asked for here, Ricky. His hero why owns Night Stalker in lane, actually. Fine. It is really rough, and you can also pretty much guarantee you can get Savage Roar off if he goes for a Crippling Fear option, which is just not going to happen, right? You just... If you, if you run in with Crippling Fear, as long as either him or the bear are outside... You get that Savage Roar sending Night Stalker away. Yeah. So this is, this is actually a really good pick. I like this a lot. Getting a phone call from my doctor for some reason. I'm sure that's not super important. We'll figure that out later. Uh, at uh, 9 p.m., you say? Yeah. Interesting. Yep, yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully you have voicemail. We'll find out. I'm sure I'm fine. Yeah. If uh, you die mid-series... <laughs> You know, if stream goes dying. out, guys, call Jerry. Yeah. Well, I, I want to hear, like, uh, Stannis death throw by you. <laughs> it might not help that much, because I'm pretty sure he's still chained up. But we'll see. Uh. We got last pick here for Beast Coast. They're looking for their mid laner, of course. And you're dealing with 40R's Earth Spirit. And now you have this lone druid to consider also being able to go mid. But, I mean, if you do that, what do you have in the safe lane? It's, it's got to be, be an Earth Spirit mid. One second left. The Monkey King. Okay. Uh, Chris Luck special, focus. right? It is a uh, Chris Luck special, yeah. He's run this quite a bit. His uh, Monkey King is insanely famous. K1, you know, not misclicking his hero again after what we saw the last time. He does lock in the Spectre. No, I don't know, man. I'm going to be talking about that on the entire tournament, by it's the way. It's never going to stop. Everyone's going to be talking about it. I saw it in For chat anyone... before we got here. Everyone's like, ooh, is he going to play five or one this time? It's like, all right, come on. <laughs> What the hell is with this Tidehunter set? <laughs> what do you this mean? Like He's a ghost. Hero. It doesn't look anything like the hero. It looks like some sort of tribal, primal... Are you talking because of the, the Dire Tide effect? Just everything about him. 
<laughs> so the turtle set was from t the underwater TI. Five seconds All right. remain. If you covered up the name, you would not know that that is Tidehunter. Dude, how many other heroes are that massive? A lot. What? I'm pretty sure Mars is that big. Doom is that big. My glance value, Ricky. Well, when you see him in game, you see the big shell on his back. So you do, at that point, kind of get an idea. It's, it's tight on her. Yeah. Fair but, enough. But yeah, we're going to see Costa Bile on his alone druid. I'm really excited not, for this. It's not even an anchor he's holding, though. Yeah. That's a. An ability called anchor smash. I use the boat. <laughs> I'm not sure how you feel about that. There's a there's an super old cosmetic called uh something boat. I don't know, bit of boat or bite of boat. Not sure. Great cosmetic. I, I use it. Squid and uh, shark carcass, and they kind of bleed into each other. And Is it squills down. or the? No, it's the squid uh, headpiece, and then a shark oh back. Oh my god! Yeah, they I... pretty... yeah they've uh, been in the game for like six years or something do you remember the to... the patch when the squid headpiece was like bugged and it was always facing like one direction and wouldn't follow his hero's model of course yeah that was that was a good time looked especially buggy with the shark piece <laughs> <laughs> i love it man cosmetics make this game so much fun yeah all right game one here team brazil and beast coast all right, look at this. I, I want I want to start talking about Hector already. Everyone questions just how good this guy is at carry. This is efficiency. He starts his game, levels up Spectral Dagger, shoves out the, or sorry, just regens all of his mana up right away, gaps that distance even quicker with a plus 10% movement speed. Look at this guy go. My God, doesn't waste a moment. And for some reason, he cut this tree over here. I don't know exactly why. Yeah, he just didn't like that tree. I caught that too. He's like, you know, oh, screw this tree. Just he he's he's going for the APM is I think what it is. Oh yeah, that one. I mean, this is the standard one. You got to cut this for the pull. Yeah, look at him getting everything that needs to be done out of the way with record timing. No other carry player will do something like this. This man is a god. Good thing no viper this game, so we're not going to see the piss covered tide hunter. Yep. Uh, Enchanter is taking a lot of damage here. Thelacore getting these fire spirits off has one more available force to pop. That uh, fairy fire, but the Elecor, he's gonna go down here, I think. Chris Lux rotation. If he gets one more auto attack, he does. He's gonna turn around onto King RD. Can't okay, when Hector can't chase any further, but Chris Luck, his Jingu gets purged and slapped down by King RD. There's your first blood going over to Team Brazil. King RD ain't grabbing that one. He's gonna feel uh, pretty good about it. Already sending himself out. Uh, what is this? A bracer and a mango to start his game. Was forced to go gush level one, which isn't as useful in the lane, but the bracer, the extra damage from that, the extra HP regen will make up for it. And Theo Lacor. Wait, what? He ends up dropping to oh, three here. Wait. What? Yep. He just ends up going down to the Monkey King, the Spectre, and uh, the Snapfire. That's it. That's okay. all it took. Well, that happens sometimes. <laughs> Uh, not up to a, a, a great start. All right, goes to be lay on this uh, lone druid down here. You probably would have thought that the lone druid would be in the mid lane, but you know what can you do? Well, I think uh, uh, given the fact that they played a 4 dr, yeah, the Earth, it makes sense. To be him. But also, the uh, lone druid lanes really well against Night Stalker. So it kind of makes sense to keep him here. Um, he's also not threatened at level five, as we said, for this, the Savage Roar uh, reasons. So it's a, it's a pretty good lane matchup. Mm -hmm. no? um, Chris Lockie. Yeah, like you said, a pretty good lane matchup. Or speaking of good lane you know, matchups, uh, Earth Spirit here. Mox is completely on point. Uh, Leo Style was in the chat, and I do turn to a giggling girl whenever he's around. Big Leo Style fan here. All right, everyone's saying it's my drug dealer. Toxic. All uh, right. Uh, 40R mid lane versus Chris Luck. All right, he's going to get these Jingu stacks. You do have Boundless Strike now available. It's a pretty much full heal here off the creep wave if he decides to. Nice deny on the range creep. 40R, he's going to struggle in this lane, though. I mean, Bucky King just matches up so well against so many melee heroes. And Earth Spirit, he's not as good of a laner. I mean, once he gets level oh 10, yeah. Oh my god. 
I'm not sure if you saw this top lane. Oh, that feels so bad. Moose drops a sentry to go for the deny, but Thelacor hits him with the fire spirits and gets both auto attacks on the enemy ward in time. Oh my god. So that lane, sad. that war uh, camp is still blocked. That feels awful if you're the enchanter. She's got the harpy stormcrafter here, though. She's got to take this one. Yeah, there she's going to go, uh, re you know, return the favor to Thelacor here. Yeah. You only get Look three casts now, right? Uh, you can get four. Yeah, just because it's got so much mana regen. Wait, let me run the numbers. Yes, you can get four. Nice. Oracle Courier bottom goes down with his regen on it. That feels bad. Schofield playing on very low HP, but he's doing all right for now. But there it is, the fourth. Yes. Neff with the math. Neff, actual 200 IQ. All right, King RD top lane in so much trouble. A couple auto attacks here. Hector finds the kill. That's just the, like you said, the power of the Harpy plus the impetus. It's a lot of damage. Tidehunter can't reduce that. Yeah. And uh, Harpy Stormcrafter is just a, a better version of Zeus. Who would have guessed? Let's go field uh, back down here in the bottom lane again. Lane shoved into the tower. Not able to do anything about this. Whisper's just going to get all the farm in the world. Schofield will hit level 3 off of this one as well. I really like that Chris Luck did go back for the Orb of Venom. A lot of times... Uh, in these lane matchups, you can start with it, but it ends up being pretty costly for your starting items. And so a lot of times you end up just faring one out. The other taking two tower shots there, top lane, but he's going to be all right. Plenty of regen. Oh, I'm so ready to watch this boundless strike for health. Oh, yeah. Oh, Phoenix goes down top. Stuck around just a little bit too far. Hmm. Hector going to be happy about that one. 170 gold under his belt. Not getting as many lasts as he likes, just uh, the favorable matchup with the Tide Hunter like you were talking about at the start. As the game goes on, Spectre has an easy time dealing with Tide, but right now it's a, a struggle for the laning phase. For sure. I mean, he's got two kills under his belt, so he's not too starved for money. Uh, we can look at net worth really quick. I mean, he's second Tide Hunter at the top despite his death. Like we said, he just basically gets to free farm the lane. Yeah, he doesn't really care too much. I love the option for the Ring of Health, that Bracer. Some people opt to go for a Wraith Band instead of a Bracer, just so you have that extra armor, but works out well either way. Yeah, not as important against the Spectre, because uh, part of the damage that she's doing to you is uh, magical from uh, the Spectral Dagger. It's not exactly. like you're playing game. Ooh, Hector in a little bit of trouble. Nice dive under the tower. Through the cork needs to drop the tower damage, though. That uh, last Fire Spirit off the mark, though, so he should be fine. I'm just going to salve Taking up. Yeah, King RD took a lot of damage there. I think that Centaur's top and the slow coming in from Moose. So, they'll be, be thankful for that one. That was uh, Moose's help, right? Uh, no, no, that was King RD. Oh. That was his own salve, and he has a uh, Enchanted Mango as well. Oh, Finishes on, up that no, Perseverance. Oh, on, on to Hector? Yeah, I think that was Moose's, yeah. Yeah, Hector would never spend his own gold on a salve. Yeah, we've, never seen, uh, we've never seen Hector salve once. The not wealth the certainly does not trickle down on Beast Coast. <laughs> uh, Lone Druid bottom lane. So he is level 5. It is nighttime now for Night Stalker. He's about to hit level 5. A big power spike for the hero. He did go one point in Crippling Fear, though. You don't normally see that. A lot of players opt to go for just like Hunter in the night and multiple points in Void. Yeah. It's... Uh... Interesting. I think he, he feels if it's super important to actually get these kills on the, the heroes down here during the night time because the moment you commit too hard on them, he feels if you're going to get Savage roared away, the kills is not going to happen. He doesn't actually have any points in the ability, though. You must I think you'd be true. able to tell. It's, so you hover over the hero, you can see what level the Spirit Link is. Rookie mistake oh, yeah. there. That's interesting. Well, I mean, he's all right. He's not really nice. under pressure. It's more of just like a counter as the game goes on, right? If he can get on top of him. He's about to hit level 6 too. Once, once he has true form, yeah, there's no way you're killing this Lone Druid. If he decides to go for it. Top lane Oracle TPs in to purge off that haste rune from Chris Luck. And they're going to go ahead and chase here. No Ravage available, but Thelacor going to catch him with those fire spirits, making it up onto the high ground. They're going to be fine. In comes the roll from 40R as well. They're going to try and chase down Chris Luck, but he is out. and He's going to immediately TP mid. Forcing a big response. I mean, two heroes to the top lane. 
Hector, uh, he's not happy about this. He just wants to be able to farm by himself. Doesn't want anybody interrupting it, so. His teammates or the enemy team doesn't want either of them bringing attention to his lane. Yeah. And now Chris Luck rotating bottom. I mean, he's at the point now where he needs to, he wants to just try and make stuff happen. Dark Ascension gonna be available in 80 experience. So, I know, and then Grandma's here soaking it. So it makes it a little bit less likely that he's gonna get it. Hector actually opt to head into the jungle the seven minute mark, try to grab himself neutral items. He gets himself an iron tree, that's something. Mm -hmm. They start picking him out immediately. Uh, Oracle had spotted him, but gets right back underneath the tower, maximizing his HP regen. Look at this man, an efficiency god. Absolutely. King RD doing some good damage to the tower. Bottom lane, Lone Druid used his bear to scout out all three heroes, and so he just leaves TP's mid. Really smart play there. Doesn't want to risk going down underneath the tower, but top lane. Ravage, it's available. They don't even need it. They just slap down Schofield and Hector's gonna just TP bottom immediately. Mm, gonna go ahead and try and trade tier one towers here unless they decide to go bottom. Does Tidehunter have wait, Tidehunter has Meteor Hammer. He certainly does. He's got Ravage Meteor Hammer already. Just eight minutes into the game. Let's see it. Alright. They're gonna jump on to KJ. That's the haunt in the Ravage catches three. There's gonna be the magnetize. He's gonna start bouncing on through Chris Luck. He's rotated up here. 40 are unable to roll away. Thanks for the bounce strike. Double kill for Hector. Beautiful play there from Beast Coast. The Meteor Hammer, uh, that's a new one for me. Doesn't end up killing the tower, leaves it at 20 HP. But Whisper with this Dark Ascension Vision, able to provide a little bit more knowledge for his team. They root up Monkey King underneath the tower, but there's not enough damage here coming out from these heroes. And we'll just back on out. Yeah, to bring him down there. Hector's going to be happy about that. Getting two kills under his belt. His uh, radiance is going to come out even faster. The only man who still goes this build. And, you know, somehow he always makes it work. Everybody else, this uh, radiance build is simply too slow. Just uh, farming up these camps incredibly efficiently as well. I uh, team fight could have gone a little bit different if uh, the oh, He's going to deny it with the Wild Wing Ripper. Oh my god. What a sick play by the Enchantress. Beautiful. You love to see it. Poor man shield now found on the Spectre and uh, Moose. He feeds Hector another salve. Oh my god. This guy, this is how efficient uh, K1 is. He drops the Royal Jelly on the ground because he cannot be bothered to lose the extra agility he gets from Poor Man Shield, uh, poor man shield briefly. He made Enchantress use it on him. Oh my no, gosh. <laughs> Diving in the mid lane, a nice cookie away, but goodbye, Chris Luck. The boulder kick's gonna finish him off, and now Schofield trapped as well. A meteor hammer from King RD. This guy's got objectives, and it's the mid lane tower. This does actually make sense when you think about the fact that they don't have a lot of early game push besides Lone Druid. But now with the meteor hammer, you have actual tower damage. You have so much now. They take down these towers in no time at all, and Hector, he's got his work cut out for him. I mean, yes, he has. Looking for Whisper, no Dark Ascension, and it's daytime. Crippling Fear going for the TP. No way to cancel it. He's going to make it out. Bounty. Spectre. Still uh, inching closer towards that uh, Radiance. Another 3,800, or sorry, it's another 1,000 gold away from the Sacred Relic. Well, oh. They found Schofield here once again. Mortimer Kiss is not going to get put to good use uh, anytime soon. Now just finding kill after kill here on Team Brazil, taking advantage of uh, Spectre being a little bit slow to come online. And, and that's uh, the punishment for going this Radiance build. Boy, a lot of people still go this Blade Mail. Not farming very bad at the moment. Regardless of that, he manages to sit at the top of the CS chart. This guy always finds farm. His lane didn't go great, but then he manages to turn it into a several kills. Uh, looking for Chris Luck mid. Sunray is out. He's going to go ahead and bound this strike to cancel that. King RD is like, ah, I'm coming for you, sir. He's got the Meteor Hammer just channeling on his face. He gets it. Oh my gosh. Chris Luck. Not much you can do here against the Tidehunter. You do not have the damage by yourself. I hang a coral reef on your Bottom lane, Dark Ascension. Yep, it was used, but trying to close the gap. This Sloan Druid is so tanky. They're looking for KJ, but... They can't connect on all the Mortimer Kisses. They managed to get the, the Savage Roar as well to cancel the ultimate. Really nice play there from Costa Bile. If he gets a root, he has Mask of Madness as well. He's going to activate that, try and chase down the Slizzard here, and he's going to find her. Cookie's on forward, runs right into a big boulder, and look at King RD once again. And I got... I'm going to work on the tower, guys. Don't mind me. Yeah. Meteor Hammer dropped again on this thing. Uh, fortified now on cooldown, so... 
all three outer towers now gone down. You're on a timer here on Beast Coast. Hector, you gotta catch up still. Uh, just about finished that sacred relic, but you're gonna need another 1,350 gold for that Radiance. Once they have it, yes, they'll be able to take these team fights, but Lone Druid's still very scary. You're the top in net worth on Hector, but next three heroes, it's all Brazil. Yeah, and it's it's Brazil by, by a good amount, too. Night Stalker, now that it is daytime, really slows down in farm. And the Monkey King, you know, he went for a 3-2-3 three, three build, which means he's not going to be able to clear these creep camps uh, or, or waves as, as fast since he doesn't have these extra points in the Tree Dance and the Primal Spring. And he is going for the Echo Saber build as well. Yeah, just luck. To uh, do what he can at a little risk as possible. These last couple of fights have... Uh... Left him a little bit damaged. And Lane, they're going to jump in on the core. He dives aggressively. They could go for an egg here. A rolling boulder coming on in. Cookie sends him away. Schofield going to try and slow it down. There's going to be the boulder kick. He just eggs up on the high ground. Schofield just going to get ravaged. A sick bait by the egg. And then the disarm from Oracle. Oh my gosh. What a combination from Team Brazil. A beautiful gameplay there by them. Feel the core of playing so well with this team. Just uh, putting complete faith in them. Drops the supernova right in front of multiple heroes. But, you know, the disarm, like you were saying, the ravage, the meteor hammer. You're not going to come online fast enough on... Uh... They're, can, they're just going to walk high ground in, like, the next three minutes. They Very smoke little up. Where are they going? Very little stops them from walking high ground right now, to be honest with you. I mean... Yes, they have to be kind of worried about uh, the Mortimer Kisses, but Tidehunter, he's already pretty big. He can almost tank up a tower at this point. Once he gets his Guardian Greaves, he's ready. Dark Ascension's available, but they're just, there's no reason to commit it. You'd lose so much. And Jesus, I right, honestly, this Meteor Hammer has paid so many dividends already this game. Like, you think about the, the what is this thing? Uh, Falls, Fortune's End. Dang it. Fortune's End, the root duration is perfect setup for the Meteor Hammer. Yeah, I mean, you start uh, channeling it up wherever you see it. Um, when Whenever you think of the, the thing is about to connect on the Oracle, where uh, he will connect that Fortune's End. Oh my yeah. god, they caught Chris Luck again. 40R, man. This guy on his mid lane Earth Spirit. You, I think you got to start respecting this thing. He now has Spirit Vessel. He has the Treads. He picked up that 50 damage talent. He's going to go back for his Echo Saber like he normally does. And suddenly, you know, if you're Spectre or, you know, uh, Monkey King or uh, Night Stalker, like this spear vessel is huge. It crushes you. Yep. You have such limited uh, space on the map now to farm on Spectre. She's struggling to, to keep up with GPM, and you are just surpassed now by the Tide Hunter. Just, all right, now finishes the Radiance. 15 minutes in the game. I mean, almost had a 14 minutes Radiance on Spectre. That would have been insanely good. 15, not bad at all, though. 118 CS already, especially considering he only had like 14 CS at five minutes into the game. Yeah. Of recovery, but it was at the cost of a lot of your outer towers right now, and they're up 5k net worth on Brazil. You need to start uh, taking the fights into Brazil one way or another here on Spectre. I actually wouldn't have minded Phoenix going for a Meteor Hammer of her own and, and just going high ground on their next set of ultimates because the only thing that prevented them from going high ground before was Ravage and Egg being on cooldown, right? But yep. now they are, you have to consider Radiant Spectre, it is online. And style will come out as quickly as possible as well. I'm not sure he's going to be able to survive uh, some of his burst damage. I think. Oh, uh, at moves. No, he's just going to swim himself away. Well, that was so loud. I'm not. Did you hear that? When Kosei uh, picked up the uh, the illusion rune, it, it like activated the spirit link like sound bite. <laughs> it was just super loud. Uh, they're going to just work on the Roshan here, the Disarm. Plenty of damage between these heroes. They have Mask of Madness. MKB going to be the next choice for this uh, Lone Druid on the Spirit Bear. And there's no, no way to contest this on Beast Coast, right? Are they going to try? They could. It's a very hard fight here, though. I mean, you're fighting into Supernova and Ravage. So oh, they're rolling in. There's the Supernova. They get the Snapfire immediately, and they're going to chase for more. Nighttime not available, obviously, until now. There comes the Haunt, the Ravage. It catches all four. Goodbye, Monkey King and Costa Vile. 
just shredding through these heroes. Triple kill for him. He's looking for his fourth. Gonna be Hector on the Spectre. He gets it. Who even needs a Rampage when you can get Roshan? Yeah, take the Ultra Kill on Costa Bile. Amazing coordination out of them. Everybody tipping each other here. One, uh, actually a couple out to the enemy team there. Team Brazil is showing the BM to Team Brazil. That Spectre kill worth quite a bit of gold as well. 425 when the way goes to be lay. And there it is, Ages of the Immortal. Ultimates were all coming in for that last fight, but once these are off a cooldown, you're ready to push high ground. Yeah. I mean, we were, you were talking, you know, Spectre online. She's got the Radiance. Let's see what she can do. And that was 15 minutes of farming, losing so much map control. And that's what you got out of it. That does not feel good. Hector you know, just being punished uh, for his style of play and everyone on his team on the East Coast, and they were forced to play around this uh, very farm-heavy Spectre. I wouldn't say it's their fault for falling. I mean, if they don't die, then they're very... Uh, it's very easy to run at Hector. I think they need to change up the strategy and not go for this Radiance spell. I mean, the guy plays such efficient Dota, but it's just a little bit outdated. Yeah. I think he's got to go back for like the, the Blade Hill build. It's uh, boring and low skill as it feels. Well, you have a Monkey King bar completed on the Spirit Bear. He's going to give him an Imp Claw too. Rub salt in the wounds there. And uh, more Meteor Hammer channeling. Very nice. King RD has Guardian Greaves. I mean, he's, he's such a just solid hero for his team mid lane. It's just the Lacor and 40 are constantly finding heroes and killing them. I mean, it's only gonna get worse. Echo Saber now completed on Earth Spirit. He's going for uh, the Black King Bar after that, and then the Silver Edge immediately. Not wasting any time. Knows that uh, Hector, he's gonna start proving a threat. So now scaling their items for that one. Team Brazil obviously doing their research here. Your top tower, it's in shambles. Your haunt's still on cooldown for another 30 seconds here. No fortification available. They've got no tools here. It's it's nighttime, but they can't fight into them. I mean, you're about to have Ravage in 13. Eggs on, uh, egg is available. They're gonna roll in, find Hector. He does get cookied out, but they can just dive this as far as they want. He gets the root. Oh my God, he has buyback. No haunt for a few more seconds, but there's gonna be your Wukong's command. King RD just walks out. He doesn't care. Egg over. The Ravage comes out. They manage to catch the Monkey King. The Meteor Hammer. It doesn't even. It does connect. Oh my goodness. KJ snipes him with the purifying flames. Two heroes dead. Beast Coast, your base belongs to Team Brazil. Mortimer Kiss coming through. Going for the base, he just resummons the spirit bear, of course, and they get the barracks. They're just gonna leave. One of three objectives now completed. I mean, if you Two buy back on Hector here, you're, the, the, you might as well just GG out, right? Is that how how it works? Basically, the guy never. Uh, oh guy my god! Uh, it doesn't stop. Gofield is already dead. He just doesn't know it yet. He's, he wanted to hold the spirit vessel charge, but just figured, screw it. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, he pops the wand. 40 R. Okay. This is just, this is just cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, space created by Schofield. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> It'll give uh, Spectre a chance to get that uh, Yasha before the next fight, but Manta style is still a very long way off. Man doesn't even want to spend gold on a town portal scroll right now. Dude, they, they see Spectre on reward, they immediately smoke, and now Thelacor and 40R once again are beelining for him. Yep, and they know he's got no TP. I mean, he's trying to get this Yasha up as quickly as possible. I think he'll get the TP gold before... He's probably not happy with Whisper about that one. There it is. TP gold, Yasha, buy them both. Send them out. Let's oh see. my god, 40R is going to get him. Yeah, he's there dead. it is. The roll in doesn't actually connect, but there's going to be the kick, the dive in from Phoenix as well. He immediately haunts. Dude, he's just dying. He can't do anything in this fight. He's going to maybe bring down Thelacor. He, for some reason, decides not to egg, but Whisper getting turned on by 4DR. He's doing a great job right now, but uh, your whole other rest of your team is just mid pushing. It feels like they don't care. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't want to waste any time. You still have ages for another 50 seconds here. Spirit of Bear, uh, summon be up in another 10, and uh, Ravage in 20 here, which is before you're going to be able to get back up on Spectre. Yeah, I mean, they've just been playing around these cooldowns so well. Every time they have uh, Ravage available, they're getting ready to posture for fights. Okay, Blightstone turn, or no, that's the uh, Magic Amp from Grovebow. Turns them into a weird pink LED. 
Tidehunter. All right, Wukong's command. It's out. This could be a fight, but oh boy, there's the Ravage. There's going to immediately take him down. King RD saved by KJ, and he's going to be just fine. The Guardian Greaves or providing him so much regen. Already has some Purifying Flames on him as well, and 40 are busy looking for Schofield as he's dancing around. They just call GG. I mean, I think you have to. There is no way back into this game. This is a slap down by Beast Co or by uh, Team Brazil. Yeah. Amazing gameplay out of them. And you know, I didn't see this coming with their draft. The Earth Spirit, the mid lane, uh, the lone druid safe lane. I mean, they're mixing things up and they're making it work against the giants of uh, East Coast. I mean, that was just such a convincing game. The draft was so nice. That last pick lone druid into the night stalker is is a phenomenal lane you know you're gonna have a great off lane on the tide and 40 hours earth spirit man three games three wins it's been phenomenal it has i mean i'm not sure uh what else there is to say 40 r i'm i'm taking notes as an earth spirit player myself uh i want to start running this in the mid lane i'm sure i'll get fleeing by my allies because i won't be able to play it on his level but He's making it look so good with that 50 damage talent, just going right in. Allies there backing him up, and uh, Theo Lacroix just complete trust in his teammates, dropping these eggs in right in front of the enemies, but always followed up with a Ravage and with a Meteor Hammer. Such a value pickup there. Yeah, you know, a lot of people would look at this draft and be like, ah, this is a you know very off-meta draft, but boy, did Team Brazil make it work. This was a sick game from them. We've got game number two coming up here in just a moment, everyone. So definitely, uh, definitely, what? Definitely stay tuned. We'll see you after just a short break here on the BTS Pro Series Season 4.